Hey guys, Justin here from the SketchupEssentials.com. So initially I had another uh, video planned for this, but um, everything kind of crashed on me this morning. So I'm just going to uh, just throw together kind of a quick, uh, like a two by four table type tutorial. So this is something I found on Pinterest. It's kind of a, it's kind of a table that sits behind your sofa. Um, that you can put like lamps and stuff like that on. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the top of this table, and we're basically gonna make it using. Um, Let's say we're going to use two by, we'll make it out of two by fours. No, we'll make it out of two by sixes. So all you're going to do is you're going to type in your length. So let's say this is going to be eight foot long. I'm going to do a comma and we're going to say six inches wide. So type in eight foot comma six. And then all you're going to do is you're going to push pull that to about two inches. And I realize the actual dimensions of a two by six aren't two by six. But for what we're doing here, we'll go ahead and do that. So first thing you're going to do is just uh, select that object and we'll just make it a component and we'll call it table top piece. Um, and then go ahead and make sure this box that says replace selection with component is selected. Click create. And then you're going to move the, use the move tool to create two copies of that. So, so just move it once and then um, using copy mode and then uh, type in times two so you create a second copy of that. So that's kind of our first piece right here. And actually what we can do with these now is we can actually make a copy of them uh, to create our center and our bottom pieces. So let's say that this thing is four foot high. You know what, let's say that it's three foot high. So go ahead and create a copy that's one foot down and then type in times two. So then you've got kind of your three tiers in here. So now you can come in here and kind of work with this piece. And uh, basically what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna come in here and basically we're just gonna build our frame kind of off the end here. So, and what that may require us to do is make the top of our table a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a, uh, we'll call this one a two by four. So four inch by two inch rectangle just like this and then uh, we're going to go ahead and make that a component as well we'll call that support and then uh, we'll go ahead and push pull this up to the bottom of this table and we're probably going to have to extend this top piece but that's okay we'll go ahead and get into that in a second but go ahead and make a copy of that that goes over this front corner and then we'll move this across in a minute but first we're going to go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish this thing out. So I'm figuring we're probably gonna have another two by four on the top here. So you can just type in four comma two, extrude that across the top just like this. You can triple click that to uh, select everything. You can call this another, you can make this another component or you can just do this with groups. Um, go ahead and make another copy down here. Just like this. So now we can kind of work with this piece. So once you move this piece down here, all you have to do is draw a diagonal line across the face right here. And then all we're going to do is we're going to use perpendicular inferencing um, in order to uh, draw a line off this face. So basically what you want to do is you want to start from the midpoint right here. You want to draw a line. And then just move your mouse up the line for a second until this on edge shows up. And then just move your mouse until it kind of turns purple. Um, and purple is going to indicate, there you go, purple is going to ind indicate that you're perpendicular to this edge. And I'm just going to draw a half inch line this way, and then uh, I'm going to draw a one inch line this way. That'll give me my full thickness. And then uh, you should be able to use perpendicular inferencing here as well. Um, you know what, you don't even need to do that. You can just uh, move a copy of your line to each one of these points um, using the move tool. Then all you got to do is you just got to come up in this corner and you gotta kinda close everything off so that you've kinda healed healed your faces. And then once you have that, you can come in here and you can del delete all of these guidelines and these extra faces and stuff like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and make this a component as well. We'll call it cross brace. And then uh, you can just push pull that across your face just like this so that you've got kind of a cross brace piece. And the reason we made that a component is because now we're going to move a copy of it out here. We're gonna use the scale tool to flip it. And then we're just gonna move it right back 
to this corner right here. So now you've got kind of a general cross brace type piece. And what you may want to do, because this isn't exactly centered, is you want to go ahead and but go ahead and move these pieces down so they're kind of centered right here. And then um, all you're going to do from here is you're going to select all these different pieces in here and then you're going to right click on them and you're going to make those a component and we'll just call these end piece just like this and then all you got to do is you got to take that piece create a copy of it over here um, and make sure you use the scale tool to flip it in case you move any pieces or anything like that but just kind of move it back against this edge right here just so you've got that and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make these top pieces unique because we've got to make them a little bit longer and so all you got to do to do that is just select these three pieces right click on them and click make unique and then all you got to do is you just got to push pull these until they're on top of your piece right here and you can see how that means that these three change because they're all instances of this new unique component you, you created but these three don't so you've got kind of the general top shape of your object right here and uh, so now what you're going to do is you're going to be able to come in here and you're just going to create your kind of two by four support that's in the middle here so just come in here and find the midpoint and then uh, draw a line two inches that way and then four inches this way and so what that does is that creates your general two by four shape just like this and in the image it looks like this kind of goes into the piece a little bit so we're just going to go ahead and you know what we'll call that one inch for right now just so that it looks a little bit better and so all you're going to do from there is you're just going to take that piece you're going to right click on it you're going to make it a component again call it center support and then just move this straight across right here so that gives you kind of general um, table shape that we've got in here so and if you wanted to you could come in here and you could just model uh, this piece has some kind of metal buckles around the end so if you wanted to you could come in here and just kind of model your metal buckle just like this you know if you wanted to give those a little depth you could definitely do that as well so you could just use the push-pull tool to push these out like an eighth of an inch or something like that so and then once you did that you could erase these face pieces you could make these components as well make a copy of this over here again use the scale tool to flip it and then move it back along this face right here and then Same thing over here, you can just select both of those, move them out, do the same thing, flip them in place, and then move them back against the face right here. And then you can come in here and color everything up or you know, finish this up however you wanna finish it. So one last thing you could do to kind of clean this up, because I know it's kind of ugly with these pieces uh, intersecting right here, is you could come in here, you could, create, you could make this object unique, and then just kind of use the rectangle tool to draw a face along here and then you can just use push pull to just use push pull to kind of push pull that face down so that this piece kind of moves around that piece right there so it just makes everything flow a little bit better so that's definitely something you could do just to kind of make that piece look a little bit better so anyway that's just a quick tutorial of how to come in here and create this table i do apologize uh, for the rough rush nature of it i had another video ready and then my SketchUp model crashed halfway through and I lost everything. So sorry if it seems like I'm rushing through this one. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you what you thought, what you liked, what you didn't like. I'd love to have that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Um, also, I had, um, I put out my 100th video last week, so that was pretty cool. And I just want to say thank you for all of you taking the time to watch these. And hopefully I'm still helping you and hopefully you're liking um, what I'm putting out. But uh, if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.